And first up, I want to talk about Trump's State of the Union. Well, it is that time of year once again when President Trump delivers his State of the Union at the start of every calendar year, or whoever is the US president has to do that. It's a speech to the US Congress which reports on the conditions under his presidency in the United States of America. And there's a lot of fanfare and there's a lot of applause and all that in watching it. But I must say, putting that aside, just looking at the substance, it was a good speech with some very impressive content contained within it. And of course, most of us know that Nancy Pelosi then tore up the speech on camera. Uh, she sat behind him uh, and in the closing moments of that speech. And I just think we need to put that aside for what it is, which is a fairly petulant PR stunt, and look into the speech itself, because there's some highlights in here that really do make a difference for Christians, not just Christians in America, and not just in the advancement of good policy positions in general for America, but these things spill over into the wider world. I mean, I think that Trump's uh, efforts in the pro-life space are starting to impact in other places as well. So this leads the way, as America often does lead the world in so many key areas, particularly in social areas. Um, here are some insights. I'm going to run through some. Firstly, on religious freedom. Here's a quote from Trump. He says, my administration is defending religious liberty, and that includes the constitutional right to pray in public schools. In America, we don't punish prayer. We don't tear down crosses. We don't ban symbols of faith. We don't muzzle preachers and pastors. In America, we celebrate faith. We cherish religion. We lift our voices in prayer, and we raise our sights to the glory of God. God. Pretty amazing. Imagine if we had a, a leader that would just come out and say those sorts of things. Um, and importantly here, he is committing to freedom of speech in uh, the pulpit for preachers and pastors um, and to celebrate faith, which is something that, you know, is increasingly under pressure here in Australia. I recently did an interview on the issue of LGBT conversion therapy, which at the end of the day is a policy area that simply seeks to muzzle Christians in what they believe in key respects of the gospel, despite what that phrase may evoke within us and the things we may think, uh, but, but that's not really what it means. There's an agenda going on. Um, also, he said something pretty great about abortion, and Trump is, uh, I think he's been called the most pro-life president in the US's history, and that's really starting to look very true. He says this, and this is off the back of speaking at the March for Life in Washington, D.C. Uh, he said, as we pray for all who are sick, we know that America is constantly achieving new medical breakthroughs. In 2017, doctors at St. Luke's Hospital in Kansas City delivered one of the earliest premature babies ever to survive. Born at just 21 weeks and six days the, and weighing less than a pound, Ellie Schneider was a born fighter. Through the skill of her doctors and the prayers of her parents, little Ellie kept on winning the battle of life. Today, Ellie is a strong, healthy two-year-old girl sitting with her amazing mother, Robin, in the gallery. Ellie and Robin, we're glad to have you with us tonight. And this was part of Trump going around the room as he went through his speech. It was punctuated by moments where he had examples of what he was talking about in the room. Uh, and he had, you know, a serviceman returning home to his family, which happened in the room. And there was a lot of, obviously, drama and emotion around that um, in a good way. Uh, and then there was uh, various others, and this is one of the examples that he singled out. There was a there was a, an African American girl who got a, a, a scholarship to the school of her choice uh, um, from a disadvantaged background, and things like that. And here's one of the examples he chose to put in that lineup of key moments in his speech, and it was the survival of a baby girl who was born at 21 weeks and six days. 21 weeks and six days, completely legal to kill her in the womb, uh, in if the mother wants it, in Queensland, uh, in New South Wales, in Victoria in South Australia, in all sorts of jurisdictions in Australia. And yet, you know, here's a case where actually that baby at 21 weeks and six days, such a, a, a young age is viable and can be saved and can live. And by the way, feels the pain of that abortion if the abortion is carried out. And so it's a very powerful statement, a very powerful pro-life statement. But it goes on. He actually says, Ellie reminds us that every child is a miracle of life. And thanks to modern medical wonders, 50% of very premature babies delivered at the hospital where Ellie was born now survive. It's an incredible thing. Thank you very much. Our goal should be to ensure that every baby has the best chance to, to thrive and grow just like Ellie. That's why I'm asking Congress to provide an additional $50 million to fund neonatal research for a America's youngest patients. That's why I'm also calling upon members of Congress here tonight to pass legislation finally banning the late-term abortion of babies. Whether we are Republican, Democrat, or Independent, surely we must all agree that every human life is a sacred gift from God. That is the most powerful moment in the pro-life history of the United States, to have the president actually put his neck out and say that, and to think that it took Trump to seriously put pressure on this issue, this pro-life issue. Um, we've had presidents who have been, you know, professed Christians and have not done this. It's taken Trump. 
to do this. Regarding judges, Trump notes that his administration has appointed 187 new federal judges, including two Supreme Court judges, and elsewhere he's called them pro-life judges. They are ju because in America, the uh, court system actually has an awful lot to do with the social policy of the nation. Uh, and those judges make an awful lot of decisions. Uh, for example, there was a recent story I saw coming out of New York where they actually have LGBT conversion therapy laws there, but they're looking at repealing them because they are afraid that they're going to be challenged in the Supreme Court and overturned. And so you see then uh, what, a, um, what, a, what a difference it makes to have um, judges uh, who, are, uh, who are constitutional conservatives uh, in the federal courts. Um, and they really do set the social policy agenda for the nation. Um, I'm also going to mention some stats on employment and jobs because he's had a lot of impressive things to say around that. And I mention this because the dignity of work is a very important thing. Uh, work is actually a creation ordinance in, in, in Christian thinking, and the Apostle Paul condemns those who do not work to supply those who depend upon them. Um, and work makes us better because it disciplines us and it gives us a means by which we can improve ourselves, and therefore it's an important humanitarian uh, thing to do. Um, and so uh, just, and you'll see that from the stats. So first, the unemployment's the lowest in over half a century. Three and a half million working age people have joined the workforce under Trump. Uh, that's compared to 300,000 people dropped out of the workforce under Obama. The unemployment rates for African Americans, Hispanics and Asians is at the lowest level in history. African American poverty has dropped to the lowest ever recorded. Unemployment for women is the lowest in 70 years. Unskilled workers have the lowest unemployment in US history. Seven million Americans have come off food stamps and 10 million have been lifted off welfare. The net worth of the bottom half of wage earners has increased 47%, three times uh, more than the top half of wage earners. Low income workers have seen a 16% pay increase. Stock markets have soared 70%, adding more than 12 trillion US dollars to US wealth. Uh, and I could go on. Absolutely staggering figures there with a really important humanitarian outcome and a really important outcome for the dignity of people and ordinary people living in America's communities across that nation. Um, you know, there are those who just can't say anything good about Trump. There are many who just hate the guy. They might hate him because he's from the wrong side of politics. Uh, they might hate him because uh, they, they feel clever mocking him and pretending that he's a moron and that they're smarter than him, which is frankly ridiculous. Uh, I mean, uh, however moronic people may think he looks, he clearly ain't no moron, uh, otherwise he wouldn't be where he is. Um, and what they don't realise is that everything that he does is calculated to upset them and all the rest of it, and he, 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 he has a bit of a game going on there. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's not stupid. Um, but anyway, or they'll never forgive him for finally breaking through the media and politically correct mould, or maybe some of them are just jealous because he's rich, he's successful, uh, you know, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and he's completely independent. He doesn't need other people. He just wants to do his own thing uh, and he gets on with it uh, all because of his past character flaws. Now, that last one, his past character flaws, I will say I sympathise. I do. And this is where I think we need to be uh, circumspect and, and just clear about President Donald Trump. Um, I don't think we can ignore his past character problems, uh, his trail of marriages, his unfaithfulness admitted by himself, his sexual innuendos, the lack of humility that he's shown at key points in his life. We can judge him on those things. We can actually look at those things and say, hey, we need to be cautious with this guy as to how far in we go in terms of endorsement because they are the fruits of his character. And that is the thing that primarily matters. And I I do get nervous when people claim, you know, that Trump is God's man, for example, or nervous when there is an unmoderated and overzealous praise of Trump and who he is and all that he does and suggestions that he must definitely be a Christian and things like this. I just think we're just pushing the envelope too hard on that. There are serious concerns from the man's own mouth and life that just need to be remembered and borne in mind as a matter of wisdom, basic wisdom wisdom when we come to think talking about people. The fruits of a man's character in his life are the most important thing about him. And in this case, we don't want to champion Donald Trump as a good example in all respects. We just don't. Um, but that said, and I've done that as a big sort of qualification on what I'm about to say, which is that whilst I may have reservations about who Donald Trump might be, or perhaps who he has been in the past, and look, hey, people improve, um, and we've got to be aware of that. But, you know, as much as I might have those reservations, I sure like what he does as president in terms of real, substantive policy agendas and outcomes for the American people. I like it. 
it's good. And uh, I'm very, very grateful for it. Here is a man who has broken through the politically correct mold. He has charged through the wall of fear that others were controlled by and thought that they couldn't stand up on life issues and thought that they, thought that they couldn't speak boldly enough about religious freedom issues and thought that they had to fold into the little box that the media built for them. No, he cracked through all of that. And I'm so glad he did because it's changed geopolitics uh, more broadly. Um, and he's done much for the lives of ordinary Americans, you know, the little people or the, the quiet Americans, we might say, being Australian. Uh, these people who are just living their lives and need and need the dignity of work uh, and, and need a break. There's so much good going on in that area. He's achieving lasting change. He's achieving good change. Look at the uh, judicial appointments that he's making. Now, I may be skeptical about his character, but that's pretty normal for politicians and leaders. There ain't many that you don't have some skepticism over, and particularly because they're in the public eye and you can see all the warts because they're held up in the public eye. Um, and so it becomes clear and easy for us to judge from the sideline. But hey, in terms of what he's actually doing as president of the United States, in terms of his actual substantive policy results, I have to say, I'm a fan and it was a great speech. Missed, again. Hey guys, make sure you click like to like the video or hit the subscribe button down here and click on the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And to watch more videos, just click here. Cheers. Go on, click one. You know you want to.